Hi, thanks for stopping by PosterCentral.com's video blog. I'm Pete Howard and this is a masterwork. This is amazingly historical. This predates all of the Family Dog and Bill Graham psychedelic posters of the Bay Area. A lot of you will know a lot of what I'm going to say, but it's of course a can you pass the acid test tour blank, if you will, that uh, was used in 19, uh, December of 1965 and January of 1966. Now, acid tests were multimedia events put on by novelist Ken Kesey and um, his band of uh, acolytes, if you will, the Merry Pranksters, and they were just, they just had all kinds of, uh, you know, mixed media going on. They had uh, light shows and uh, live music, of course, and, um, you know, strobe things, electronic sounds. I've got a list somewhere of all the things that go on. It's really, in fact, I'll put it in another uh, video blog, give more detail on the acid test, but this is such a beautiful poster. Um, the acid test, by the way, played up and down the West Coast from basically Canada to maybe Mexico, initially for only about 90 days. And then um, the trips festivals kicked in and, and they overlapped with the, the regular um, Family Dog and Bill Graham Presents concert posters in February of 66. It's interesting, you know, the big name on the poster is the Grateful Dead, so obviously Deadheads cherish this poster as they should, but, you know, there's other names on here too, like Allen Ginsberg, but everybody admits it was the event that was the star. Even Jerry Garcia himself of the Dead has played down his band's participation, saying it was so loose that sometimes we'd play for ten minutes and say we don't like the sound and walk off. Not in a huff, just, you know, eh, not right now. Other times they jammed for three or four hours. It was just, it was really loosey-goosey and fun. And of course, a huge part of the performers and the audience were dosed on LSD because that's the whole theme of the thing. And um, so Garcia has said, though, people didn't pay to see the Grateful Dead. It didn't matter that her name was on the poster. They were there for the event. It was the most cutting-edge, hipster, happening scene you could possibly imagine. And uh, way before psychedelia hit the mainstream, again, starting in like December of 1965. <clears throat> so, um, another interesting uh, aspect about um, this poster is the, the, um, the, the layout of it, the format. I'll give you a little closer scan, but there's, a, there's like a series of arrows going right down the middle of it. And that series of arrows, you are meant to cut it and make a, put one half on top of the other and make a tall poster. And that's how they often were hung and stuff. And, by the way, down here in the corner is the little space where we call it a tour blank and that's where the different locations would be written in for the different shows such as Muir Beach, California, the film or auditorium there's, there's, there's a couple from and so forth and sometimes these were colored in actually both at the time and after the fact. It's quite a complicated history. There's a really good website that really covers these acetate posters well. It's postertrip.com and um, that site gives the artist for this poster is Paul Foster one of the Merry Pranksters, whereas for the longest time, I guess, everybody thought it was Norman Hartwig did the, uh, the art, but I guess it's been sort of uh, decided that Paul Foster did the artwork. So we like to mention who did the art when we can. Anyway, if you look up seminal in your dictionary, you just might find this, <laughs> this poster pictured the beginning of the psychedelic San Francisco rock scene, and of course, which changed the world, not just the Bay Area. So a real privilege to show you this one today. It's a killer poster, and I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, thanks for stopping by. The next one won't be as good, but we'll see you for something else soon. Okay, bye-bye.